Are you eager to invest in real estate but don't have enough funds to get started? Well, I have a solution for you. It's called house hacking. In this video, I'll be showing you how house hacking can help you achieve financial freedom, even with a low budget. Stay tuned. Today, we're gonna be discussing a topic that's near and dear to a lot of our viewers' hearts, house hacking. If you're not familiar with the strategy, house hacking involves buying a property and renting out a portion of it to help offset your mortgage and living expenses. It's a great way to get started in real estate investing while also enjoying the benefits of home ownership. Get ready to level up your financial game. This video is your ultimate guide to house hacking success with not one, not two, but eight amazing steps to help you achieve financial freedom. So get comfy, grab a trusty notebook, and get ready to take some notes, which are gonna help you out. We're about to kick off an amazing journey that's gonna change your life forever. Let's go. All right, so step one of house hacking is getting pre-approved for the right loan. The reason house hacking is such an awesome strategy is because it allows you to invest in a property with a very low down payment. For example, if you were to buy a fourplex and not live in one of the units, you would need to put 25% down for the down payment alone. And on a $400,000 house that comes out to about $100,000, just for the down payment. That's not including any closing costs, any repairs you might need to make, any furniture you might need to buy. So that's something to consider. But with a house hacking strategy, for the same $400,000 property, you can get in with as little as 3.5% down, meaning that you would only need to bring $15,000 for the down payment, as well as the other closing costs. To take advantage of this, it's crucial to sit down with a loan officer and get approved not only for the right loan amount, but for the right loan itself. Make sure you can get approved for an FHA loan or conventional with you living in one of the units so that you can get a low down payment on the property. On an FHA loan, you can do as little as 3.5% down. Meanwhile, on a conventional, if you're a first time home buyer, you can actually do 3 to 5% down. Now the concern a lot of people have is when they put less than 20% down, they have this dreaded premium mortgage insurance or PMI. But I'm here to tell you that that's not something that you should worry about. That only adds about $100 per month to your mortgage. So that's something that you can actually get rid of in a couple years as your home appreciates and your principal balance is being paid down by you and your tenants. Step number two of house hacking is to decide the type of property that you want to invest in. There are many different ways to house hack, but the most common ones are to use a single family home or multi-unit property like a duplex, triplex, or a fourplex. If you're single, house hacking a single family home can be an excellent option because you can buy the property and rent out the extra bedrooms. But if you're married and living in a house with a bunch of other people, that may not be ideal and your spouse may not like that. That's why it's essential to explore other options. Buying a duplex, triplex, or a fourplex is another great way to house hack because these multi-unit properties allow you to live in one unit and rent out the others, which can help offset your mortgage payment. Huge thing to note is that you can only get financing for a low down payment option if the property has four units or less. So when deciding on the type of property you wanna invest in, you've gotta consider your lifestyle, your budget, and your investment goals. Single family homes may be more suitable for some people, while others prefer privacy and the cash flow potential of a multi-unit property. So take the time to research the different options and figure out which property aligns with your financial goals and long-term plans. In the third step of house hacking, you need to find a good realtor. A lot of people wonder whether they should hire a realtor or if they should do this on their own. I'm here to tell you, that if you're buying your house hack or if this is your first time buying or even if this is your fifth time buying, having a realtor by your side is gonna be extremely helpful. Realtors have access to properties that might not be available to the public and it's not on the market yet. So if you can snag one of those for a lower price than you would have paid when it's on the market and it fits your criteria, that's a huge win for you. As a new investor, it is crucial for you to have somebody that's gonna help you navigate you through the buying process. A realtor is gonna help you understand the contracts and guide you through the process and answer any questions that you may have. If they're not doing that, then they're not a good realtor. The contract aspect of it is gonna be so complicated and overwhelming for new investors, so I highly recommend getting a realtor. And while you can buy a home on your own, having a realtor by your side is gonna be such an amazing asset for you because it's gonna take a lot of the pressure off of you and you can have the realtor do all the research as well. And by the way, you don't have to pay for the realtor upfront. There's a misconception going around that you need to pay them upfront. They get paid once the loan closes or once the purchase transaction closes. 
So in a sense, realtors are free until the house purchase finalizes. All right, now this is where it starts to get fun because step number four of house hacking is to start shopping for properties. This involves getting inside of properties and understanding what makes a good one versus a bad one and figuring out what exactly you're looking for in terms of rental income and expenses. And to analyze the numbers on a house hack, it's important to look at it as if you're not house hacking it. Now, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but this means that you're looking at the property as if you're putting 25% down and you're looking for about a 15% cash on cash return, which is what typical investors look for when they buy a property. When it comes to running the numbers on the rents, you've got to look at it as if you're not living in one of the units. This is going to give you a better understanding of what the gross rents would be and allow you to run the numbers to see the end results. You've got to keep in mind that when you do buy the property, you're going to be living in one of the units and the numbers are going to be different. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what your desired return is. Step number five is to start making offers. The key to success in this step is to know your desired return and know the purchase price that's gonna help you achieve that goal. It's important to not get emotionally attached to a property though because this is where people overspend and they pay way too much for a property that they really didn't need, especially for a house hack. And on the flip side, while lowballing is okay, you gotta make sure you don't come in so low that it A, offends the seller, and B, that you don't even get a response back because it's a waste of your time and it's also the waste of the seller's time. Now, putting in offers can be a nerve-wracking experience, but remember that each offer is contingent or dependent on inspection, appraisal, and financing approval. So this gives you time to do more due diligence and make sure there aren't any issues with the property. Even if you do get cold feet, you can still back out of the purchase during the inspection period, or here in Texas, we call it the option period. Remember that the better area that you buy in, the better of a house it is, the more people are going to be willing to pay for rent, which is eventually going to lead to a positive cash flow. So don't be afraid to put in some feelers and offers and hold to your criteria. In the end, these little tidbits are going to lead to a bigger upside while you're in the property and you're going to get a desirable return, especially when you do move out. Step number six, this is assuming that your offer is accepted and you're going through the closing process. Once you've found the property that meets your criteria and you've made an offer, you've gotta make sure that everything lines up before going to the closing table. This means confirming the interest rate, the down payment, closing costs, prorated rents and deposits, and making sure everything is in order. At the closing table, take the time to review the numbers one more time, make sure that everything is correct both on the closing disclosures and your closing documents, and if you have any questions, call your loan officer, call your realtor. Ideally, they're going to be on hold or in the title office with you, but that way everything is done correctly and you feel confident in closing on this. Once you've closed on the property, congratulations. You've officially started the house hacking process. By renting out a property that you currently live in with a low down payment, you can have other people pay for your mortgage and potentially help you cash flow. Keep in mind that there still may be some additional work to do like finding and screening tenants for any additional units and managing the property, but the rewards of house hacking are gonna be tremendous. Moving in at number seven of the house hacking process, you gotta make sure the property is managed correctly and that your expenses are kept in check. While you may be tempted to overspend, especially on your property, it's important to spend wisely and to take care of the property. That way you can live as cheaply as possible while somebody else pays your mortgage and hopefully you're cash flowing. Since you watched this video and you did your due diligence and bought the right property with the right numbers, your investment should continue to grow over time. Not only that, as your investment grows, your renters are paying down your principal balance on the mortgage. So you're creating a gap here that's gonna give you a lot of equity. It's so important to continue to monitor the property and make sure that any little necessary repairs are done and any little upgrades that you need to do are done as well to make sure your house continues to increase in value. And that way, when you do end up needing to borrow more money from the property that you just house hacked to buy another house hack property, the value of your home goes up and you're not gonna have any issues. Step number eight is a congratulations from me to you for completing the house hacking process. You've successfully acquired a property, lived in it while renting out the other units, and hopefully generated some cash flow. Here's the really cool thing. Now that you've lived in the unit for one year and one day, you can move out and repeat the process. 
The beauty of house hacking is that it's a repeatable process. You can use the same strategy to acquire more and more properties and build your real estate portfolio. Y'all, this is how people get rich and have 10, 20, 30, or even 40 properties under their belt that are all generating cash flow. I know people that are getting about 20 to 40 to $50,000 just in cash flow off their properties. And in the future, if they wanted to, they can sell all those or they can do a cash out refinance to buy some more. So this is so simple to do. By house hacking, you just created a passive income stream that's gonna help you achieve financial freedom. And you did this with a really low down payment too. Now, like I said earlier, you can use the equity in your current property to buy your next one. By doing so, you're gonna be able to buy more properties with a low down payment and take advantage of the benefits of house hacking. But you might be wondering, which loan is best for me if I'm gonna house hack, especially if I'm a first time home buyer? And you can find that in this video here.